That's tomorrow, and that is it for us today. And we will leave you with a... I can't do it. We'll do it live. Okay. We'll do it live! Fuck it! Do it live! I can... I'll write it, and we'll do it live! And thing sucks! In five, four, three. Yes, yes, sir. Uh, you guys know who that was. I love me some Bill O'Reilly, especially when he made that drop for everybody, man. Well, what's going on, everybody? My name is Lockout Men, and I appreciate you guys coming back again to the Lockout Men podcast show. Today's episode is a awesome episode. I saw this. I, I saw this gentleman on uh, MSN, CNN, and uh, and a couple of other ends. <laughs> news reports out there he is the he's a vice president and ceo of a of a major trucking company and um and yeah i would like to bring this man on so we can have a quick conversation all right so if you guys like you know like what i what i do just like subscribe comment share and hit that bell and that all button for all the content that comes in and comes your way if you like to support the channel you can definitely do that by hitting me up with some coffee you can hit me up in the cash app that's dollar sign lockout man or you can do with the coffee app either way it goes it really doesn't matter I also like to welcome the LOM community in here so we can uh, chop it up behind the scenes. All right. With that said, with that said, I like to start. I like to start this off by uh, by talking about this uh, gentleman and his company. With cities in crisis, one trucking company is going above and beyond to protect their drivers. That company, Illinois-based trucking company, JKC Trucking. I like to welcome to the show, Mr. Mike Kosarski, to the show. How you doing today, sir? I'm 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 doing very well. Thank you. Thanks for having me on the show. I I appreciate you. I I appreciate you coming on. And you know, I I ran a little bit late because. Uh, you know, I was getting unloaded uh, over here at the uh, what's that Coca Cola plant, but uh, I, I you know I called you up, you know what I'm saying, and I was like, "Yo, I'm coming, I'm coming, give me a chance, give me a chance." <laughs> so I do appreciate you. Uh, I do appreciate you coming on, sir, and uh, giving me your time. Uh, why don't you? Uh, no why don't you tell the drivers who you are uh, to the uh, who you are to the company? So, uh, my name is uh, Michael Kucharski, and I'm the vice president of uh, JKC Trucking. And uh, what we do is, is JKC is the, one of the biggest refrigerators. Do is JKC is based out of Chicago. Refrigerator uh, is specialized in refrigerated and frozen LTL shipment. LTL stands for less than truckload. I'm sure all truckers know this, but I'm just going over. Uh, just doing it again. We service the entire Midwest, so the whole West Coast, and back. Our main terminal is based here out of uh, Southern Illinois, and we have two other terminals located in California. One is in uh, Santa Fe Springs, and which is in Southern California, and the other one's in uh, Northern California in Stockton, California. Okay, okay. Which is located in Northern California. Okay. How how long how long how long have you guys been in existence, Mike? Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds, uh, sounds like sounds father, like a good question. His, <laughs> yes, it's a great question. So, uh, my father bought his first truck in in seventy seven. Uh, I, I was born in seventy eight. Just tells you how old I am. But uh, in when we start when, we, when he started a trucking company, obviously he was working for other companies until he he built uh, GGC. But we've been in, in business maybe phew, a little bit over four years. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, family. Of course, family owned, family operated. 
just their family owned, family operated company equipment, company of drivers. That's what's up, Mike. Let's uh, let's let's get into uh, why uh, why I brought you on to the show, Mike. So, Mike, mm-hmm. with with I mean, so with many of the cities you deliver to is talking to is talking defunding the police departments with about 70 percent of drivers refusing to deliver to those cities. Why your company decided to take a stand uh, with the drivers and not delivering to those uh, defunded cities? Well, you know, JKC's number one priority is, is, is supporting our, our drivers' safety. You know, uh, all JKC truck drivers are, are family to us, you know. Uh, and you don't want to put anybody, a driver or, or family, in, in harm's way, you know, uh, to go to one of these defunded cities. You know, uh, everybody keeps talking about defunding the city, defunding the police, defunding the police, you know. Defunding the police, uh, in my opinion, is, is a bad idea. You know, the, the police is a critical part of protecting our drivers and all drivers. You know, not enough that truck driving is one of the most top dangerous, most top, most dangerous jobs. You know, most of the deliveries are done early in the morning when it's still dark outside, usually in bad neighborhoods, and no one around. Mm, yes, yes, it is. Um... I mean, it, it, it is, it is, uh, it is dangerous. And we, and us truck drivers do be parking in some unsavory places. So, you know, if we don't have, if we yep. don't have that chance to, uh, you know, call for help when needed, then that's, you know, we're, we're in the situation of, of getting hurt, you know, you know, uh, um, I agree. And, you know, the, oh, go ahead. the worst part is, you know, driver, Truck drivers usually are on the road for weeks and months at a time. Most drivers are hauling valuable cargo. Everybody wants to steal valuable cargo. You know, when you're a truck driver long enough you, on the road, you'll notice, you know, there's no safe place. Violence doesn't only happen uh, in designated states. It happens everywhere. You know, truck drivers don't have their own security. You know, they are their own security. If, if, if you'll be hauling valuable cargo, who will protect? Who will protect our drivers and all truck drivers? Exactly, exactly. Mike, how how is this going to impact uh, not only your business but trucking in general? If if you decide to not uh, you know deliver in those cities that has trouble, I mean, how's, it, it, it's going to have a big impact. You know, uh, all trucking companies are already struggling because of the COVID situation, and if we won't go, you know, deliver in different cities, we're gonna we're gonna lose that business and that revenue. And, and let's face it, 2020 has been a very, very bad year. But what I keep bringing up uh, to everybody is, you know, I wonder what's going to happen at the end of the year when I have to renew my cargo insurance, my liability insurance, my physical damage insurance. I'm positive that these insurance companies are going to put some kind of language into into the contract saying, hey, you could go into defunded places, but you're not going to have protection. And if you're going to want protection, you're going to have to buy a special rider. And, and God knows how much they're going to want for that special rider to, for you to go. And and my question is, even if I have that special rider and I send my drivers in there, will that be enough? Mm. With, uh, with trucking, as you said before, with trucking being in the top five uh, dangerous jobs and even more dangerous, even this year alone, with uh you know with drivers getting in precarious situations like the driver that was on i-35 he was pulled out of his truck the fedex driver that that unfortunately ran over a protester uh another driver was you know his his cargo got looted what measures what measures your company is taking to protect your drivers so we've done a little bit of training, um, and, and we have uh, we, we monitor our, our trucks all the time. So, you know, these hot spots or when these, these protests happen, these violent protests, uh, they don't, you know, they just happen all over the place. So we try to keep the places, uh, keep them away. Like for example, we did, we deliver into Portland. You know, I guess uh, all the action is the hot spot is Portland downtown. We don't go to Portland downtown. We uh, thankfully delivered to the warehouses outside of Portland. So we keep our drivers away. You know, we've trained our drivers, you know, hey, if anything happens, call 911. That's the number one. So the driver's number one job 
that we suggest to do is is, is, is call 911 when there's nobody around so somebody can come come and come and help you and we're just monitoring these drivers with the dispatches making sure you know we're, we're giving check calls watching them on on, on, the, on the satellite just to uh try to avoid these areas so uh, to, to to keep them out and, and keep them safe okay okay you, uh as you said before you 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 consider your drivers as family and i i, I hear the passion in your voice uh that you have for your drivers not too many not not too many trucking companies have that affection with with their drivers what what makes your company like you know what makes your company the company that you know potential drivers would like to would like to come to you know I, so my father started the business he's still involved in the business he was a truck driver i was a truck driver uh you know, well, currently I, I'm not a truck driver no more. My my legal team tells me that I need to stop driving because there's too much <laughs> liability. Uh, but I have other bigger things, you know. So we know firsthand how it feels to be a, a truck driver, you know. Truck drivers were never, you know, uh, popular people. You go to places, they don't treat you not, they don't treat you correctly. Uh, the bathrooms are horrible or if, even if there's a bathroom, you know, they made you sit in your truck. There's always, you know, the truckers always were kind of like the ugly duckling, and and, and we we understand that, and we're trying to change that and, and let it let the let the world know. My my most frustrating thing is there's a lot of these people or CEOs that are in charge of these big trucking companies, and when you check, you know, this guy never never even got into a truck or, or drove a truck, you know, and then when you look up his his history. You know, he came from a company like Linens and things, and he came into a trucking company, and now he's in charge of all these truckers, and, and he is dictating uh, what, what what has to happen. You know, that is not the – it frustrates me when that happens because that's not the right person. That's kind of a disconnect, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You should always be in, in, in connect with, with your truckers and, and make them feel, 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 feel safe and, 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 and special. Okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. Mike, with all these with with all these violent protests going on in the wake of the George Floyd, Rashad Brooks, and just recently, Trafer Perloran and Jacob Blake up in uh, Kenosha, Wisconsin, drivers want more rights to carry a firearm across state lines. What's what's your stand on drivers' rights to carry? I would say, you know, in my opinion, and, and Jay's opinion. I, JKC supports, and I do, any law that allows truck drivers to protect themselves at any place. You know, like, like I said before, violence does not only happen in the state, it happens everywhere. And where I think the disconnect is when these truck drivers, especially the overroad truck drivers, they're, they're in their truck for days, weeks at a time. The inside of that truck is your home, you know, and you have to protect your home. So, yes, you know, you should be able to... Uh, a carrier firearm, even if you cross lines and, and, and states, there should be something allowing the truck driver saying, look, this is your home. It crosses lines, but inside your home, you should be able to protect it. I remember one of my first trips that I did was to uh, Lo- uh, Long Beach, California. I got to the shipper early. It was midnight. I, I, I shut down. You know, I went to sleep. And then in around three in the morning, you know, I, I hear somebody break my window. Mm. Somebody breaks my window. Uh, the gentleman opens the door, jumps in the driver's seat, and I sit up. And I'm almost eye to eye with this guy. I'm like, I don't know what this guy wants. Right. You know, I don't know if he wants. He knew I was here. If he's here to harm me, if he's here to steal me. Glad I was very lucky that that I scared him away with a, a baseball bat. But you know, the the crazy part is that nobody's given tr- enough truck drivers credit is. You know, before all this even happened, you know, truck drivers were constantly getting attacked. I was talking to one of my drivers, uh, drivers that came from another company, and he says that under the other other company, he had a gun put in his head three times. I was like, man, how did you get out of all three situations? You know, and, and, and you know, thankfully uh, he did, but, you know, nobody signs up for a job that, you know, somebody's going to put a gun to your head three times. I talked to I, I talked to several drivers. Uh, a couple of uh, uh, a couple of interviews that I had 
Uh, one driver was assaulted. Another driver was shot at on the highway. Uh, of course, he was an owner operator. So, of course, he had his, you know, he had his personal, you know, personal protection on him. But, Mike, with mm -hmm. all with all these major companies out here, uh, I, I don't want to name drop, but uh, Swift, uh, U.S. Express got in their policies that we're not able to have our own personal firearms in, you know, in their trucks. You know, this, of course, this ain't my truck. It's, it's their truck. And I, I guess I got to abide by their rules. In your opinion, what can those type of companies that, that put policies in place, what companies like that can offer, uh, to offer protection for their drivers, not only just to, you know, be responsible for the freight, but also be responsible for the driver's well-being. Hello? Oh, I I think we got disconnected. Do you hear me now? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you hear the question? Yes, I heard the question. Oh, okay. So, uh, the, 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 the biggest problem with these big companies, it, it's a liability issue. You know, uh, the, their, their law, the legal team said, hey, you know, you let's not have, a lot of these drivers have guns in their trucks. You know what I mean? Maybe bad things could, could happen. And I, I, that's why I believe these rules are written. But what we need is a, a law, and I would say a federal law, saying that the driver has the right to allow him to protect himself. Because I think a law like this would trump uh, the insurance policies uh, if, if, if they would allow it, you know, and, and not only, you know, they all protect themselves, you know, everybody's forgotten, you know, the truck driver is the essential worker. They were the good guys. They were hauling cargo during COVID, you know, putting, putting uh, themselves at risk, exposing to the virus, everybody was sheltered at home. You know, we had uh, volume drops, uh, you know, we had all this price dropping, not only was it a bad time to work, you know, there was not enough work and, and people forget that, you know, people, people, these, these people that are attacking these truck drivers are making the truck driver, the bad guy, the bad guy, they're not the bad guy. The truck driver is the good guy, you know, bringing the essential goods for all people, good people, bad people, you know, the looters, uh, the good, the bad, the ugly, you know, he, he is. And, and what people forget is most truck drivers are family people. They don't want, to be in, in, involved in this violence, and I, in almost every other interview that I have, or almost every interview I have, I I say that you know we need to sit down with the politicians to come up with laws that would protect our drivers. That you just can't run up and you know jump on a truck and and, and drag the guy out and, and, and beat him to death. Because if, if if you do, you know there should be some kind of liability for this. You know, not only are they beating up the wrong person, you know nobody's being liable for this, you know, and, and, and the, the, my worry is, you know, all truck drivers are, are protecting themselves with, with, with something, you know, if it continues going this way, you're going to see a video uh, or, or hear on the news, truck drivers shot three looters, uh, you know, and, and that's when it's going to get really ugly. And, and, and mm -hmm. the, the, the people in <clears throat> the government need to protect our drivers before you know we have a, a situation the last time we had a, a truck driver attack before this was Reginald Denny way back then yes you know uh, yeah. and then since then since then you know this hasn't happened so nobody came up with laws but it's happening again if it happens twice it could happen a third time when you gotta we need to protect our drivers you know uh, you just can't you know run up on a, on a truck driver and break his window and, and, and drag him out of the truck you know he, he, he's at work you know, uh, what would happen if you ran into the bank and, and broke the teller's window and, and dragged her out? You, you know, you'd be in a lot in of trouble. You'd get in a lot of trouble. <laughs> exactly. You will get in a lot of trouble, federal trouble with, with that. But yet you come and pull a you come and pull a driver out of out, out of the truck and you know and, 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 and beat them up like they did on, on I I mean on I thirty five up here in Minnesota. You know, that's, uh, you know, nothing happened to them, you know, but the driver, you right. know, the driver gets, you know, get hauled off to jail because 
you know, he, he didn't even know that the, that they closed the ramp. And, you know, he just happened to do 65 and just happened to look up like, oh, shit. Like, oh, excuse my language, but, oh, man, ew, oh, let me stop. And which he, you know, which he did. Then everybody come mm-hmm. crowd in his truck and, you know, getting on him. And we, we, we don't hear nothing else about what happened to them, though. You see what I'm saying? So yeah, I, yeah, I, 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 I wholeheartedly agree that you know the trucking companies uh, need to get together with 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 uh, with the politicians so that we so that you guys can sit down and see how can we better protect us out here because uh, you know the same cliche goes you know without us the world don't move. I mean you know we. We hear it all the time, <laughs> but, but yeah, that is true yeah, though. Yeah, yeah. It, it is, no. it is true. It's etched. I mean, what, without us, the, 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 the world, you know, maybe the half, maybe half the world to stop, you know what I'm saying? But, but yeah. like, like they say, without, without trucks, uh, America will stop, you know? And, and, and then one of the things I, I did like is, you know, this year that, you know, the president brought multiple truckers, the White House and explain to all of America saying, hey, look, you know, truck drivers are the backbone of America. You know, I, I, I want to say most Americans knew, but I, some Americans probably just didn't care. They just assumed that, hey, these groceries that I buy at the grocery store, somebody pushes them out of the back room. They must be all in the back room, right? Right. Uh, and it, in it, it the, in, in the, everybody's eyes. In the back room, in the back of a truck, <laughs> right. in the trailer, in the dock. <laughs> in one of them yeah. small, in one of them small ass, uh, 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 blindside docks. Yeah, yeah. That's that's where your food is at. It's right there. <laughs> it is right there. Mike, right. Mike, thank you. I, I I do appreciate you coming on. Um, I have a, I I just have a few more questions. Um, <laughs> what um. Let me, I'm, I'm trying to get my thought together. Uh, well, this could be the last question, I guess. I don't know. Depends. Uh, but so far, if enough drivers, you know, if enough drivers just came out and just say, yo, we we had it up to here with, with the regulations, with you guys not taking care of us, uh, with, you know, with all the, with, with all the violence that's going on, and we just, just stopped rolling what do you think might happen you know i the food supply chain never had a big safety stock pre-covid they they said and i estimate it was 72 hours but obviously covid hit you know everybody's being shut down uh we ran low on food i obviously they lifted the hours of service so drivers could get food faster to places i don't know if it's completely restocked, but it, it's not going to be good if, if one of these uh, cities decides to, to defund the police and there's going to be nobody to protect them. Obviously, I, I would say a lot of truck drivers are going to say, a lot of truck drivers are family men. They're going to say, yo, this is not what I signed up for. You know, this is kind of like you're going into a war zone, like driving right in the middle of Afghanistan. You know, you never know what's going to happen. Uh, those places are going to run out of food and, and those Cities are going to have a real problem when they when they go to a grocery store, and there's going to be no food except dry noodles, and they're going to turn on themselves. You know, it's going to be it's going to be bad. And 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 you're right. You know, I've been telling everybody that driver morale has been down because of all this. You know, on top of the COVID, on top of the the you know the, the shutdown, the shutdown reopening, the shutdown again. You know, you have the you know. Uh, they're supposed to be peaceful protests, but they're not peaceful protests attracting the truck drivers. You know, it, 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 it's it's no it's no fun no more. It's it's no fun, and, and if truck drivers stop, America stops. Uh, like 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 you said earlier. You know, I mean, without truck drivers, there's gonna be nothing. That's what's up. That's what's up, Mike. There has been a few tragedies uh, out here. I'm not sure if you uh, been following, but uh, unfortunately, we lost uh, a female driver up in Alabama. Um, we recently lost, uh, another driver. He, uh, he was in an accident down in, uh, San Antonio, Texas. 
and uh, all other drivers that's uh, that's you know that's that's losing their lives on uh, on the road right here. To my trucking listeners and viewers, man, what what messages do you have for them to be safe? You know, I would say the message I would, I would say to all, all all my truckers saying the funding is the funding the police is not the solution. We have to work together. All, all of us working together with critical thinking to find the solution. You know, during the time, the time of the this crisis, you know, the government has been in the driver's seat, taking, taking, uh, making decisions for small businesses. You know, it's the t- it's time for a small business to take back the steering wheel and make the right decisions. Just sit down with the to- politicians. I, I welcome the politicians to sit down with us so we can educate them. What is the best for our economy? You know, the last time I, I checked, you know, small businesses are the backbone of, of, of America. And it's time that we need to get this economy roaring again. If we're going to have another shutdown, you know, there's going to be more companies going out of business. And I would say maybe half of them. And they're going to be, you know, there's going to be so many families and, and drivers out there. They're not going to be able to support their families. And, and that's, that's, that, that shouldn't happen. That's what's up. That's what's up. Well, Mike... Kosarski, uh, vice president, vice president, and CEO. Uh, I'm assuming of JK uh, JKC Trucking out of Illinois. If you guys want to know uh, more information about JK uh, JKC Trucking, as you guys know, I am the dude that makes the call to all these good recruiters out here. But uh, since the man himself. Uh, was nice enough to come on to the show. Uh, guys, give them a call. See if this uh, trucking company uh, will work for you. Uh, again, Mike, uh, thank you. I, I really do appreciate you coming on, sir. And uh, thank you for your time. And you have a and you have a super blessed, super duper blessed day. Thank you for having my show and and yourself and and all the truckers. Stay out, stay safe out there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you very much, sir. All right. Thank you so much. All right, y'all. Ah, uh, man. That's great conversation. Woo! I like that. That's what I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying? This uh this company right here really and truly cares about their about their drivers, man. And he's standing he's standing in the forefront of saying yo we need to protect our drivers and if going into cities that's that's not being you know funded by the police or whatever we just won't go we're not going to put our drivers in harm's way his stance on or i mean on carrying is is a great one too because you know we we need some type of protection out here you know what I'm saying? We we need something. We we parking in parking lots. We parking in behind stores. We're 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 parking in 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 precarious places to make these on time deliveries. You know what I'm saying? So, with that said, working for a trucking company that got your back, it, it's all I can say. It's all I can say. So I definitely like uh, like JKC uh, Trucking for coming on. If you guys are interested in finding out more, JKCTrucking.com. Uh, give them a call and uh, chop it up. And if you want to come on the Lockout Man Podcast show, you can do that. Hit me up in the Gmail, Lockout Man Podcast, Lockout Men Podcast at gmail.com. Hit me up. Talk to me. Y'all know what's up. Uh, you can go over to Instagram. Yeah, yeah, Instagram. That's that's still viable, ain't it? You can hit me up over there in the DM. You can uh, talk to me over there. If you like this type of content, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share, and hit that bell and that all button for more. Thank you to the LOM community for being here. I'd like to shout out BBW, Sean Fulton. Uh, let me see who else is in here. D Nitty. Uh, Christopher Robin. Thank you guys for coming in and joining in this behind the scenes conversation. And while somebody playing me out, I would like to thank you guys for watching. I'd like to thank you for listening. And 
Of course, if you like more, just hit me up. On that note, I'm about to get on up out of here. I'm about to go and play me some cards. I'm up here in Minnesota. So I will get back at you guys with a, let me see. I'm trying to make sure I hit the right button. I will get back at you guys in another video. Y'all take it easy. Peace.